You're listening to the Claret and Big Blue podcast on the Pass the Gravy podcast network. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Back, Alex, and it's our birthday. Is, it's our birthday. It's th- in three yeah, years. Anything. November three the, whole years. November tenth, twenty twenty, I believe, was our first ever episode. We're back. We weren't missing this one. Well, it, it's been a blur. It has a blur of been a blur, ups, down, misery, triumphs, and then. When it gets too much for us, we just take a month off randomly or whatever. I mean, honestly, it's been worth it, I would say. We haven't had any positive to talk about in the whole month, mostly. Yeah, no one's missed out on anything. They would have been miserable, miserable weeks to listen to this. Yeah. But um, um, I guess to do the intro, we're not live. We're on demand, pre recorded, but whatever. Same thing. We're not doing that now. All right, guys. We're not doing like, that. Like everyone's live streaming now. We was doing it before. We're doing it on our own terms. Now, you know. Whatever, but yeah, welcome to Claret and Big We're Blue Podcast back to on the internet, dedicated West Ham United and New York Giants. <laughs> That's right, football and football balls for everyone's taste. I might have to throw my sunglasses on because the sun is not <laughs> kind to me. Jesus Christ! Um, I am Mike Fish. I am joined as always by Mr. Alex Middleton. Alex, how have you been? Um, not great with our teams. I mean, we've been slightly better with West Ham and the Giants, but just I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll get into that today, won't we? How about how about life? How are you within yourself? Because that's all it's. I would say it's my life is severely impacted, unfortunately, by how my teams do, and so it's not that been is, good. It's not been great. That is true. That is true. But I mean, all right, I'm an we impact. Can just dive. What can I we say can, we, can, we can dive straight into it. Let's talk about Giants first, I guess. Like, how was right. you viewing this past week's game against the Cowboys? Was you going into it going? Like almost blank slate, you know. Why do I always hurt myself? Why do I, always, you know, maybe we can do it this week? Maybe, hey, Tommy, Tommy DeVito's had a, a you know, it's an extra week now with the plays, with the coaches, with the team. You know what? Maybe, yeah. maybe we could do it. Or was you like I was, just going, geez, right, we're gonna lose. So let's just take the little wins and enjoy it. How would you, how did you view it? Um, there was one period of joy I had in that whole game, and that was when we stopped the Cowboys on a fourth and goal in like the first quarter, and then that was about it. But I was very for my mental health, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play video games. I went and I watched the noon games at the bar with my brother and some of his friends, watched the Texans, phenomenal to see a, a functioning team run an offense, play defense. It was a lot of fun. Texans were able to win. They upset the Bengals, and I was like, "What? What I would give to go back and have that that we had last season?" But then I was like, "Well, guess what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna play video games with my friends online, and I'm gonna keep the Giants game on an iPad muted because that is what I feel like the Giants deserve. Because I I did not play in that game to go well. That game did not go well. It was not a bad decision on my part." And then to cover the game, I watched the condensed 30-minute version on NFL Plus, but then I kind of quit about the third quarter of that because that was tough to watch. And that's just where they cut out everything, but just like it's play, 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 play. Like all only plays, nothing after the whistle and everything. Like it's awesome. And I couldn't make it through that because it was just like not fun. Like this is not a watchable team, Mike. No. They're not like they're they they don't compete. They're not in games. The most exciting part was watching them argue on the sidelines. That was just like, oh, can I lip read? What are they saying to each other? Right. But then you're worried, like, is what's going on? What's that? Why are they yelling? Like, I don't want the coaching staff to, I mean, I don't want 
Dable to get fired. And I don't want Shane to get fired because I think you can't just give up on everything that they've started trying to build. This was like one of those weird years where like we've had so many injuries. I mean, maybe they made a, bis- a mistake with Daniel Jones. Maybe that was it. But like Daniel Jones, obviously he's not been able to stay healthy. He's going to be on this roster next year at some point. But we're in that spot where like if they're drafting – Second overall, I think they have to take a quarterback, right? Like we're talking about very important things in like the future of the franchise. And I think like if we draft 10th, 11th, maybe you don't draft a quarterback, but if you're drafting top five, you definitely drafting a quarterback. And that's the end of Jones, I think. Right. I mean, we can dive quickly dive into that. Yeah. Like I said, if we're, if we're picking deeper, then yeah, you've got, you've got Daniel Jones for another year. Worst case scenario. We just go again with a backup quarterback. Well, yeah, but don't they have an option at the end of next season? I thought the option when they when he signed um, his new contract, they could get it after two. I think it's I think it's like thirty two million next year if we cut him like right after this season. Oh, yeah, they'll still money, be it's twenty two million, but like, yeah, I think it'll still be, be after a... next season. He'll be on the roster next year, so he's got yeah, yeah, one yeah. more season at least. Yes, because it yeah, was basically a four year deal we could sort of get out of at two. Right. So worst case scenario, we just. I mean, unless some other teams pick non-quarterbacks, and there are some decent quarterbacks left at deeper, but yeah, we just roll for another year, screw it, and just build around other other positions and see what's coming up next year. Maybe, uh, maybe a Manning, maybe who knows? But um, this Not is a conversation. Year, be three years. I, 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 I was talking to someone the other day, and I he I figured that because obviously not this draft. But I, I thought he could, in theory, at the end of the 2024 he's season. He's a freshman this year, so you have to be out of high school three years. So oh, I, this I is thought for some one, reason there was an option where you have could have two more two. seasons. Why am I thinking? Like if you like enlist in the military, maybe. Oh, maybe that might be. It. Maybe that's what I was thinking about. Um, but what's crazy? There to was me, somebody. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt, but just because the Giants are in a lost season right now, anyways, I can't remember who it was. When I was watching one of the noon games, they were like, you know, he got um, he got an amnesty from like the military. So he has to just do his military service after his NFL career. And I was like, do you think that makes him want to like speed up his NFL career or just make it go as long as possible? We're like, fuck, I got to like go serve in the war now. Wait, who are we talking about? Football. I can't remember who it was. It was uh, like he played at Army or Navy, but he is in the NFL now. And he just has to do his service afterwards. Oh, I, I thought like, you were talking about Daniel Jones. But I could oh, imagine no, no. I could just imagine him rocking up at the army base, limping with his knee of a neck brace. And they're like, you know what? Oh, yeah. Forget it. Just forget it. Just go you know, home. Yeah, it's fine. Just ignore what I'm saying. Go back to your point. Yeah, I'm give, give me, I'll, I'll sign it. It's, you're good. You're good. Go. Um, but yeah, the crazy thing I was saying to a, a, a Jets fan of mine, and he agreed somewhat. But this is now the fifth year with Daniel Jones. And you know, we are Dan stands. We are mm, Dan, right or fun. die for the, for the quarterback. But what's crazy, whether you like him or not, whether you think he's a great quarterback, good quarterback, bad quarterback, whatever. The crazy thing is due to changing in head coach, changing in coordinators, change like bad offensive line injuries and things like that. Halfway through season five of Daniel Jones, I don't think we have even come close to seeing what his potential could have been. It's crazy to me. Like, I think you still have to, at this point, yeah, if we're, if we're picking one, two or three, unfortunately due to his injuries and stuff like that, I think time is up now. I think we have to move on from him, but it's crazy. Like he hasn't really had a fair shake of it for one reason or another, where it's his fault, the team's fault, injuries, yada, yada, yada. It's great. Is that, am I wrong in that? No, I don't think so at all. Like, I, I, at all. If, if there is another example of it, it's a rare situation. But that is because normally, after four or five years, you kind of okay. We know what's going on here, but I have no, still, I have no idea what he could be capable of if he was. I feel like system, Derek Carr. Free. Derek Carr in Oakland slash Vegas was kind of that way where there were random injuries that he would have when he would have good seasons. But like, it was just like, there was so many changes in not ownership, but mostly just fucking coaching and coordinators. And it was like, what the fuck are they doing? Is he good or is he bad? And it's still like, 
I don't know. You don't know. You still don't know. Um, but yeah, Daniel Jones, just like everything. There were so many variables where you could be like, I could see Daniel Jones going to like a consistent franchise eventually and being like a backup initially that comes in, has to do a spot start and ends up keeping the job because Daniel Jones is a good quarterback. Like, I just think that, uh, I think Mara said it in the off season. He's like, we did everything to screw this kid up that he possibly could have. And he took it all in stride. And like, he's not talking shit about the giants. He's not doing all this other stuff. He's just trying to, you know, play. He's just trying to play football. And like, that's like why I can't really, like, you can't knock Daniel Jones. I feel like there's so many Daniel Jones haters where it's like, dude, the guy's just trying. Maybe he's not the guy, but like, he's not bitching. He's not being a problem with the team. We just don't know how good he really is. And maybe we do need to move on at this point, just because we may, we may never see that. I'll just be pissed off in like four or five years if he turns into like a, a Geno Smith. Oh situation. yeah, absolutely. Like, what the fuck? Absolutely. But he'll be a perfect candidate for that. Cause it's right. Cause I was listening to, I don't know. I, I know you can get it on, on an, a competing app to iHeartRadio, so I'm not going to mention them. I have respect for you and your employers, but I know you can listen to it. But on WFAN, the local New York sports radio, they were like it was one of the shows is hosted by Tiki Barber and Evan Roberts, who is a Jets fan. And he was like, like hindsight is a wonderful thing. People were like calling up talking shit about Daniel Jones, this Daniel shit, Daniel, Daniel Jones, that. But he was like saying that at the if it wasn't for the Aaron Rodgers situation. At that time, he would have been more than happy to be like, okay, hey, if the Giants want to move on for Daniel Jones, we'll take him at the Jets because I think he might be a good in that system kind of. So it's like hindsight is a wonderful thing. He had like, but people were like all in on him. He had a great season last year. Maybe not great, you know, well, oh my God, he's top five quarterback. But he was he was competent, very competent. Won and a playoff he, game, won a playoff game, ran like he was a fucking stud last year. You can people can hate on him all they want. He was scoring with his feet and his arm. That's rare. And then all of a sudden, again, you know, some bad things happen. And all of a sudden, they're all coming back out of their caves. Like, I always knew Daniel Jones was bad. Shut up. Shut up. You was talking big about him last year. Um, but yeah, on to the, the I'll always love the- Daniel Jones. I'll you'll... always love him. I don't care what happens the rest of the way through, unless he goes to, like the Eagles or Cowboys and does well for them, and then I will have to hate him. Yeah, but until then, we will be that. Until to... then, I love, I will love Daniel Jones, and I wanted to hate him. I told, I said not to draft him, and then I was like, "Fuck it, I'm buying in. He's our guy. I gotta like him." I mean, for your own and sanity, you him. have to. Yeah, but yeah. That's until... what I don't understand. Why do you want to root against the guy that's in charge? Like, why do you want to root against the fucking? Oh yeah, I hope our quarterback's fucking awful. Yo, just okay, just so I bad. can Idiot. be there with my friends at the bar saying, see, I told you he was bad. Well, big whoop. Now yeah. our team sucks. It's all your fault. Yeah. Just get behind him. Get behind him. Except for, what was his name? Who was the guy? We Kenny, Kenny Holiday. He was Fuck the only him. one. No, no, I mean, we, I mean, forgot, we forgave him. We had that block. We, we, had did, that we, block. Did, we did forgive him. We did forgive him. Playoff game. So I'm sorry, Kenny. I forgive you. And great job. Thank you for honorary giant. Always. Once a giant, always a giant. Damn right. Is he yeah. on anybody now? I don't know, actually. Are you going to Google it? Uh, uh, doesn't it look like it. Maybe he's the last yeah. thing he ever does in his NFL career is that block. Yeah. No, if he does, not. he deserves a hey, We'll always remember him. Fuck, dude. That was such a sick block. Just have a New York Legends... Um, legend. New York Giants Legends DVD, and it's just that one play, different angles for like an the hour. Kenny Galladay highlight reel, and it's the yeah. one touchdown he had in the Week 17 game. Just a different against angles. Against the Eagles. And then it's just... <laughs> it's just that block, and it's like, wait, I feel like that was just two plays. How is that a seven-minute video? You're like, don't worry about it. See, and this one's super slow. Yeah, we're really emotional. Now we slowed it like right. Titanic we music. slowed it right when he made the block. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Um, but yeah, the Giants and Cowboys game. Obviously, because of the way I There's watched it. There's not much to say. But There's I, not much to say, I feel like. I kind of weirdly got a kick out of it just because of the way I was watching it. Because it's like, even though they put out their second string towards the end, so when we saw scored our second touchdown, I was like, "What?" I was cheering because it's like I I was expect you know 
We lost 40 to 0 week one. We lost by 32 right. points this time. That's progression, my yeah, friend. Uh, yeah, only, it was an eight point difference. That's true. That's a <laughs> whole touchdown and a two point conversion. That's a positive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, slow and steady. Like, so in about four seasons' time, we're coming for you, Cowboys. <laughs> we're coming for you. There you, you. go. So next presidential administration, we got you. Um, but yeah, it was pretty miserable because what did they get? Um, six hundred and forty yards against us. That's fucking. Yeah, oh, what the fuck happened? Yeah, to, I mean, I'm I'm not knocking. Yeah. You know, Cowboys are playing well this year. I'm like I'm not happy for them, but it's a fact. But the lose. one one man. glowing thing about our team, if there was one, was our defense is. Decent. What the fuck happened? They're on the field all the time. That's true. That on is the field true. all the time. And I mean, honestly, like, like when you look at this week, it was, I believe, our, yeah, our, we scored twenty eight against the Cardinals, week two. It was our second highest scoring game we have had offensively. And we scored two of those, or we scored our touchdown, yeah, our two touchdowns in garbage time. So, really, it was garbage time points, but we scored like six points. Points is points. But, so like the defense, like, what, like, how hard are you going to try if you're like, all right, well, best we're going to do is this? Doesn't matter. And, and once it gets to like, once they're in the 30s, you're kind of like, oh. It was 28 nothing fucking, at halftime. It was bothering? over. Yeah, it was over. But always looking on the positives. Only one team has scored that many points against the Cowboys whilst the Cowboys are at home. So that's something. So there's that. Put that and on other spin zone, Deontay Banks has been getting cooked lately. But like, Rookie cornerbacks are going to get cooked. And if you're bad, you might as well just have your corner go out there. And he's he's trying. He's making mistakes. But you learn from those mistakes. So hopefully, like, next year, we're like, oh, fuck, fuck I remember when Tay Banks, like, made those mistakes last year, got him out of the way. So now he can be the shutdown corner we know we could be. Just saying. What is the... Um, too. What's the... You knew it was going to be one of those amazing days when... What's, what's the... Is it this? Oh, I can't remember the name of it. But what's the point where instead of the quarterback taking the snap, the running back takes it? Wildcat. Wildcat. There we go. And I knew that when we switched up and tried Wildcat once, and the ball nearly flew over Saquon's head. I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Christ. It was just like, <laughs> I mean, just the saddest part is we got seven more games of this. We like got eight more weeks, seven more of these games. And like, I don't know if I can do it, dude. Like, we got. I mean, if we're going to win any more games this year, I would imagine they got to be our next three games we got in the next four weeks. We got Commanders, probably still a loss. Patriots, I would I mean, still say probably a loss. Packers, but, but probably did a loss. You watch, did but you watch the Patriots game? They the Patriots, are, game Patriots are not good. They are. They could be Giants I would say, for that number one pick. We could be in the Caleb's, Caleb Williams Bowl. I think they because I think that they are acting. Maybe not the players, but the coach. I think they are trying to tank. Like, what the fuck was Bill Belichick doing when they had yeah, a chance great. to win the game, and then he takes his quarterback out? But that's some that's some last game of the season Eagles shit, costing us the playoffs. I mean, Mac Jones wasn't very good. Yeah, but still, I don't. It was really bad. It was a close game. What were they down by two at that point or something when they yeah, took him out? No, it was. It was a very bizarre. Really? I don't know. I think Bailey Zappi gives you about as good of a chance as Mac Jones does. But yeah, Commanders is probably a loss. But like we, we're somehow always good against the Commanders. So maybe like they get it right this week and we figure it out. They traded a lot of guys on defense. I'm just looking. What's crazy is that as bad as the season's Packers, been, hmm? there's still maybe there's still one, two, three teams. That would be so. We'd be picking four for the moment, I think. No, we pick picking second, I think. 
well, according to NFLs.com, and I'm I'm just looking at the playoff picture. The Cardinals and the Panthers are below us. So in theory, that means they would pick ahead of us, wouldn't they? I don't know. Draft. Uh, Panthers go to the Bears. The Panthers pick goes to the Bears. Giants yeah. are number three pick. Okay, number three. So is it what is it? Panthers, be... Chicago via Carolina. Bears via Carolina. Cardinals then us. Okay, so the Patriots game is that could be win against Caleb potentially because you I don't I don't see Carolina winning another game. Oh, right, because... but the Bears do they take Caleb Williams? That's true. Ooh, because if they don't like if a team that doesn't like if the Panthers get the the Panthers are going to have the number one pick, but like. If it were the Panthers, they would have traded the pick out. The Bears traded that pick again last year. Um, they may move on from Justin Fields. Uh, this is year four for him, so they may just take Caleb Williams. So but sure. Just focus on what you're getting after that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think the Panthers, they're pretty bad. Panthers are pretty bad. So we're we're in a good shot. Kyler coming back gives the Cardinals a, a little bit better shot for them to maybe win. He's kind of playing for a job. You look at it that way, where it's like if they have the number one pick, they're taking Caleb Williams. So you're not going to be the guy. And also, even though they're not in the same division, they're in the same conference. You'd have thought now Panthers know that their pick is going to the Bears. That's motivation to try to win a couple of games, try to screw them over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't give a fuck where your pick is. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be bad when you trade away your first round pick and you still suck. Because surely the only mm-hmm. reason you do that is to get a good player or whatever. I don't care about them. Um, anything else really you want to talk about? I mean, no, I think we've covered sucks. pretty much it's not the game fun. sucks. We talked about not having Jones. a good time. Not straight up not having a good time. Do you want to you try to turn that frown upside down and play a little game? Let's see. Let's see if we can do it. All right. All right. Because I put together, because in honor of Tommy DeVito being our starting quarterback for at least the next couple of weeks, there's a lot of famous DeVitos out there. So we're going to play a little game called Which DeVito Is It? Long bed. Yeah, I only added it like ten minutes before the show started, so maybe next That's... next time we do a what to be, I'll I'll shorten it. But um, it was like this two is... minutes. <laughs> <laughs> if you think that was two minutes, Alex, hmm. just wait till you hear this. Yeah. Well, no, that I'm talking about the when in the in the in the bedroom. And you're like, whoa, that was at least two hours. <laughs> So that was what? Okay, sure. Um, yeah, whilst doing research for this bit, I did find there's not really much fun facts about Tommy DeVito out there, but because apparently if you watched Pastor Gravy recently, they just make them up about them. About him. He lives with his mom, they make his bed. That's true. Um, why would you, yeah, what I was who was I talking to about that? It's like that I was yeah, like that's fine if you still live at home with your parents, but why if you're a starting quarterback for an NFL team, why would you put that information out there? And what would you think was going to be? Did you think people were going to be like, oh, that's nice. I like him more. It now. shows that you focus on football, dude. I guess. It's like, I don't have to live in my own house. I have to pay him worry about a mortgage. I'm worried about football. Kind of like that. Move. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, even though he is third string quarterback, I'm pretty sure he's doing okay where I'm not worried that he's not got a mortgage to worry about. It's like six hundred twenty-five thousand or whatever. It is. I don't know yeah, what the I'm sure he's he's fine. He's fine. league minimum is. Um, but yeah, so we're comparing Tommy DeVito with Danny DeVito, and you have to. So you have to answer Tommy or Danny. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Nine hundred fifty thousand. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Oh. After tax, it's not even worth getting out of bed. So let your parents make it. But there you go. Um. So number one. Which DeBito was born in Monmouth County, New Jersey? Um, 
Tommy was born and not there. That's Danny. This is a trick question. Danny DeVito. It was. I, I went with the county instead of the... Yeah, he, Danny DeVito was born in Monmouth County in uh, Neptune. He was born in Neptune, New Jersey. He's like from another planet. Basically. All right, now they just get stupid because it's terrible. So number two, Danny or Tommy attended Syracuse College. Um, Tommy did. He went to Syracuse University. I was actually surprised you 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 almost doubted yourself there. Well, um, college. You said college, so I was like, "Wait, oh, could that have was been. another trickery." Now, Danny DeVito apparently went to like a Roman Catholic college. He was all he was a good boy. Mm. Um, number three, Tommy or Danny eats frequently at the original Jersey Mike's location. Oh, it's uh, oh shit. I mean, they're related so i would i'm gonna go danny just because of the ads that is true yeah he grew up around the uh the original jersey mics and that's why it all got together and now he does their commercials <laughs> bless him um number four tommy or danny is four foot ten <laughs> uh i'm gonna go danny on that one let's go with danny it's a bold move nice and uh, number five Starred in Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Tommy or Danny? Uh, Danny. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, you got a five out of five. Not bad. Not bad. Nice. Impressed. Yeah, Tommy DeVito's Wikipedia page kind of boring. <laughs> he needs Not, to live a life. We should add to it. Yes, yeah. We could, we could have fun with that. Yeah, let us know at, um, at CBB Pod. What random facts should we add to Tommy DeVito's Wikipedia page? Let us know. Let us know. Um, West Ham now. West Ham. Obviously, they've been up, back into an international break. Uh, the last one didn't do us because we went into the last international break hot as fuck. And then we came out yeah. cold as fuck. So it's kind of like a little, even though we won our last game, it wasn't pretty. So I'm kind of almost happy that we're in another international break. It's kind of crazy. To say. I am too, dude. It was um, incredibly frustrating to watch that game. And it just felt like, I don't know, it felt like they were trying to lose. And like I was bitching and then Bowen scored to tie it. And I was like, this doesn't matter if we if we draw against Nottingham to me. This was one of those games where like the West Ham games where we cannot afford to lose those. And uh, if you're above a team on the table, you have to get those wins against them. That was as yeah. simple as it was. At home, you can't lose to Nottingham at home. It's kind of funny because... I. Because right now I'm not able to watch like USA and NBC, so I so I was happy. I mean, I wasn't trying not to to ruin the game, but whatever. But I was planning on, you know, if we win, I'll just watch the replay on Peacock the next day. And then Alex texts me something like, "Fuck's sake, I knew this was going to happen. We're bullshit." Blah 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 blah. I'd like bitching, and I quickly checked the score, and it was two two. I was like, well, "What's the problem?" And then he texts back, "Bowen just <laughs> as I, before I hit send, Bowen equalized, but whatever." But. Uh, yeah, it was, it was just another one that it's, it's. I know I've said this before many times about West Ham. It's almost like I fucking hate it when we go one nil up within the first five minutes because it's like, oh, now we're just gonna. The second we did it, back. I was like happy. Yeah, I was happy, but I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be one of those fuck shit games where we just feel like, oh, let's just hang out, and not do it. Up, oh, well, look at them, look at them, they're scoring. Okay, cool. Well, now we're down. Now we're down two one, and it was like I thought that was it. I I really didn't expect us to tie it. Thank God for fucking Jared Bowen. I love Jared Bowen. It was the two things that in West Ham you can just can you can consistently rely on. It was Jared Bowen being a fucking badass, and then Tommy Suchek just finding his header and in, into the back of the net. Like Tommy Suchek does that every couple of games. He's like, ha that's how we have him still. The Mister Kool Aid man just like jumping his through big the walls, check head <laughs> just fucking hammering balls into the net. Yeah, he is like as graceful as like a drunk swan. He is just he just he just jumps up and just. Puts his head at it, right? If I hit something, I hit something. <sighs> he's like a baby moose, like bigger than a baby deer, but he run like sometimes he just like stumbles like a baby deer does, but like he's like a moose because he's way bigger. Baby moose, I like that. Put that on a t shirt. But yeah, it's it's just uh just frustrating because Paquet I fucking am Paquette, even though it was a miserable game because pretty much like our first goal just came from them being shit. 
and just I don't know what the fuck. If I was a Nottingham Forest fan, I would have been so pissed off that way. The guy just the guy wasn't even looking when he got past to him. It just hits his leg and bounces into Paquette's. But like, what the fuck was that? It was looked like like if you watched MLS twenty years ago, it's like these people have no idea what to do with this football. Yeah, it was bad. So the fact that we, I mean, Nottingham Forest have been better recently, but how we only at won home, that only, only at home they've been good that's true and we've been relatively good at home because i think we're because i like the fact that i mean we're kind of weaving in and out but the, what's the olympiacos game i love the fact that now they're this because they went to oh, west ham the only team was it 18 17 18 games undefeated in europe and then we lost mm-hmm. And now it's kind of like, wow, they are like eight games on being at home in Europe. It's like, yeah, just keep keep getting those fun facts out there. I like we that. We still have the stats. We still have the stats. Still That's the stats. all we need. So yeah, home would, but yeah, it was just, I don't know what's going to happen. So hopefully, because thankfully, again, for whatever reason, Gareth Southgate hates West Ham players. So That's fine. Them, Let them rest them up. Got people potentially getting injured this international break. We just Is need Ward to. Ward Prowse not on it again? Oh, of course not. Is Bowen? I actually don't know. All I saw was I didn't even bother looking when nope. they, I saw that James Will Prowse wasn't. So I was like, ah, what the fuck? Who can this shit? I know Bowen got the call up last time. It's do 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 England squad. Oh, apparently. Oh, it's a youth team. I give a shit. Um because I saw a couple of players went home injured, so hopefully he doesn't. England squad. Oh, Jared Bowen did get picked. Damn it. Damn. Well, hopefully he's okay. Because he's been a badass for us. I love Jared Bowen. I mean, him him and Paquetta have been just our only really consistent. I mean, Ariola, he he made some fucking amazing saves as well. I have to give my and then he plays some that, dickhead. He lets some dickhead goals in, though, and that's what pisses me off. It's like every time, like, there's somewhere you're like, okay, yeah, I get that. You can stop that. He's made some awesome saves, but then you're like, what are you fucking doing there, man? Like, stop that. There are a couple of them like that. Maybe he's like hanging out with Fabianski too much because I remember Fabianski would do something like that where he would make some great saves, and then all of a sudden someone would shoot, and he would do like starfish, and you're like, why are you doing that? And it would just be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, still <laughs> could be worse. Could be could be uh, Roberto. Always, I think that's the we should, every yeah, West Ham fan yeah. should have a picture of Roberto in goal. And so, Not whenever them. times, whenever times are tough, you just look and you're, oh yeah, he's gone. That's a good point. I might do that actually. I got a couple of spaces. It's a good idea. I got a nice picture. You can't. Oh, it's there. You can't quite see it. Got a really good picture of uh, Jack Hughes scoring against the, the Rangers. Always brings me joy. Fuck the Rangers. Um, your boys aren't doing too bad. The old uh, Red, Red Wings. Red Wings. Hang in there, man. Hang I, I, in was, there, dude. I was thinking this could be our year for the Devils, and then we just shit the bed the last couple of games, and Jack well, Hughes. Did good, well, and... Hughes got hurt. Oh, I could, if I could have cried myself to sleep that night. Oh my god. The Red Wings third in the Atlantic right now. Not bad at all. They beat the Bruins the other night. Kind of just hanging in there. I mean, if you... If you don't know who... Like, if you don't follow ho- hockey, Jack Hughes getting injured for the New Jersey Devils is basically like Paquetta and Bowen getting injured for West Ham. It's like, oh, that's fucked. We're fucked. Because he just scores for fun. Yeah, I, I, I awesome. like the fact that they always they combine goals and assists for their points tally. So it just looks in, stupid. Like Jack Hughes has scored a million, million points in nine games. Like, Fuck, he's good. He's yeah, good. that's pretty sick. But um, West, West Ham, Ham, yeah, I guess there's not really much West Ham to talk about, is there? The only, just I guess the international break. The frustrating thing is. As we should be already through by now in a Europa conference, no, Europa League. Sorry, we're, we won the Conference League because this that now we it's going to start because now we're because the problem is with the comp, ah, fuck, not Conference League with the Conference League champions, champions of Europe. You never seen that. 
Um, but the problem with the Europa League is if you don't finish top of your group, then you have to play another two games in the fucking playoffs. So we have to finish top. But we're joint top with Freeburg. And, I, and we do play them, well, but we it's match day six. We play them at home though, right? We do, but it's the, it's December 14th. So this is going to, by in that point, you want to be, because that's when you start getting the game on the 7th, the 10th, the 14th, the 17th, the 20th, the 23rd, the 28th. That's like game after game after game after game after game. It'd be really nice if we could not have to worry about that game, but now we fucking do. <sighs> well, maybe but, they lose. Maybe they lose and maybe we win our next game and then it doesn't matter. Oh, I don't know how that work on the tiebreaker. Because then, if we if we win our next game and they lose, head to head, huh? yeah, I don't know. We already beat them work. once, but we their goal difference the first is, time. their goal difference right now is better than ours. I I don't know how it fucking works. How it, the the tiebreaker works. Just but I think I'll, win all the games and we'll be fine. Just win them all, but because if we win out and they were they lose to us but went out then we beat them right we're tied to the lead in the group stage aren't we what's that sorry we're, we're tied for the for europa league right in the first place yes we've got nine points freeburg's got nine points olympiacos has got four so we're guaranteed at least yeah worse i mean it'd be very much worst case but we're guaranteed well, then, because they have to play... Oh, I don't know how it all works out. But we're definitely in Europe, one way or the other, whether it's the Conference League playoffs, the Europa League playoffs, or straight through to the last 16. But it's just... It's just we're going to have to play our right. best team around that time. The only good thing is that we do have, like, before then... I say that, we have Fulham before them, and they're not they're not doing too bad. Wolves, after that, they're... they're doing, I mean, everyone's doing fucking all right. It's really crazy this year. Like... Who'd have thought Aston Villa after twelve games? Aston Villa would be only three three points off the top. Like, what is going yeah, on? That's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. I do like the fact that we're still ahead of Chelsea <laughs> and Tottenham. Two weeks ago, everyone was like, "We're going to win the league," and now they're fourth. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Hate to see that. Hate to see that. Ah. <sighs> But yeah, um, anything else you want to add, I guess? Because what, what we got this week, we got nothing because it's a fucking bollocksy. Yeah, that's about it. International. That's about it, really, I guess. Should we, should we, um, yeah. should we pimp our shit? Uh, you got a new pasta gravy coming out tomorrow. Um, yeah, we're going to be uh, talking about America being awesome. We're going to talk about people being annoying on planes. Um, and we're going to answer some questions and tell you what's not cool from the week. Maybe get into a little lava talk. We'll learn, learn some lava facts I'm going to give the gang. So don't miss this one. <laughs> why, is, why is it because of the potential volcano shit in Iceland? I saw that in the news. Nope. Oh. I watched a video on Pompeii. Oh, ooh. Lava. That is an interesting play. Do if you haven't pretty wild. Yeah. Pretty wild. Like just people just being frozen in frozen in time and shit. Yeah. That's, that's pretty fun. nice. I remember when I learned that. What school. about Waffle Box? Oh. Yeah, oh, dude, now, that sucks for them. Well, we recorded Waffle Box yesterday. Now I'm kind of wishing we talked about Pompeii. Maybe next week. <laughs> next week. Pompeii part two. Oh, we could do that synergy. Oh, you get the, have the... Kush review our Pompeii segment as the movie. That would be pretty funny. Kush's podcast review. So I watched uh, House the Gravy episode one thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight. And these and, uh, idiots are dumb. Joe, you know I feel that like he would get on with Robert. I don't know why. I feel Probably. Like they seem that kind of same. Robert sees you going. Yeah, I could see that. And um, maybe I don't think he'd get on with uh, Pat. I think Pat's too animated for him. Because there's, there's, I mean, spoiler, because this, this is not what something we talk about, but because we recorded it at 9 p.m. Eastern and it went, we went a while. We we went like over two hours. Like we was like, this long for us. And you could tell he was drinking 
rum. And by the end of the podcast, he is he's a little worse for wear, shall we say. And this, well, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just talking about something, blah, 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 blah. And then at some point, he just kind of goes, you can see his head drop. He's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it did make me chuckle. Um, but yeah, we were talking about um, how far would you go to avoid spoilers after an Australian police officer gets arrested for something he did to try it because his friend was going to spoil Top Gun Maverick for him. And he went a little bit over the top. Uh, find out about that on my box. Um, a man in Aust- another man in Australia that is a great week for Australians decided to take a let's just say a wild animal home to show his kids, and it didn't end well. Um, big day National Toy Hall of Fame re- announced their recent inductees. Talk about that, break that down. Are they really toys or not? Controversial. Um, then we talk about uh, the Marvels from Marvel. Apparently, it's not marvelous, so that's in this movie mm. review. Plus, we talk about um, what order you should watch the Terminator movies and which ones you don't need to watch, and blah blah. blah. That's that got into a little bit in depth. Okay, Terminator movies, um, and uh, much much more. So check that out. Wafflebox at Wafflebox on X, Twitter, whatever at Wafflebox Pod on YouTube. Check it out. New episode comes out tomorrow, and Pass the Grade Pod tomorrow as well. So as always, you know, schedule your day nicely, ease into the day, Have, wake up. Out. Get your coffee, whatever. Waffle box in the morning. And then pass gravy in the afternoon, early evening. It's a lovely Wednesday. It's the best way to spend a Wednesday. You're going to love it. Me. You're going to love it. Um, love but it. yes, that wraps up this week's show. Uh, we'll be back. Um, I actually don't know. It's Thanksgiving week next week. Oh, God. Might be. Who knows? Might be what? off that week. Might be off maybe, again next maybe week. Maybe two weeks. Maybe. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. If the Giants win, maybe we'll be back. Giants maybe. win, we'll do it. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, make sure you follow us. Hit discover. I'm all that bollocks, 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 bollocks. Um, but until next time, see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Let's go to Peyton. He's going to break down that touchdown. Can't hear shit. Never mind. Bye. Have a beautiful time.